Welcome to the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Uh, we're going to talk about how to configure PIM sparse mode in this case. So um, PIM, or multicast routing, uh, comes in two flavors, um, sparse mode and dense mode. So dense mode is used for densely populated routers, so generally routers inside the same building or campus. Um, and sparse mode is for, as the name implies, sparsely populated routers. So the primary difference is dense mode is a push model. It pushes the multicast groups or flows out to the edge routers, and it's the edge router's responsibility to prune those off if they don't have any joins. Sparse mode, on the other hand, sends the multicast groups to an RP to a rendezvous point, and, it's, uh, and then the individual routers look in their local bootstrap router. So each, um, each PIM domain, each PIM sparse domain is going to have one bootstrap router. So the routers within that domain go to the bootstrap router and ask who is the RP or the rendezvous point for this group that I'm looking for. And once it gets that from the bootstrap router, it then goes to the RP and says, okay, I need you to send me this group. But until that happens, that group doesn't go to any of the edge routers. So it's a much, much more efficient process to use sparse mode. The other thing about PIM versus uh, DVMRP, which is the other um, kind of legacy multicast routing protocol, DVMRP attempted to build its own routing table, um, which was not very efficient. It was chatty. So PIM sparse mode, which is, stands for uh, protocol independent multicast, uses the routing table that's already on the box. So be forewarned that if there's no routes already to other PIM routers or other subnets, that multicast is not going to cross subnets, right? So it has to be in the in the IP routing table before PIM the PIM routers are going to talk to each other and before you know any multicast is going to get routed. So with that said, um, I am going to uh, just hop on my box here. So what do we have configured already? We have, I have a VLAN 10 configured, right? And I have uh, 1 slash 1 slash 1 slash 2 slash 1 and 1 slash 2 slash 2. So my uplinks configured on VLAN 10. I also have a router interface. Um, that router for interface 10.0.0.1 slash 24. And I have OSPF area 0 turned on and a redistribute connected. Um, but that's it. So I have no multicast turned on at this point. If I do a show IP OSPF neighbor, you'll see that I have a neighbor, 10.0.0.2. Um, and, um, and if I do a show IP route, I'll see that I have a route to the loopback on that, on that remote router that I've learned via OSPF, and I have a directly connected route. So I should be able to ping uh, 10.0.0.2, and I should also be able to ping the loop back on the other side. Now, I've already gone ahead and set up PIM on the other side, so I'm just going to show you the one side, and then we'll see how that works. Um, okay, so the first thing we need to do, I'm going to create a loopback interface, which I'm going to use for my, my rendezvous point and my BSR address. Uh, so... I'm going to go into config T, interface loopback1, uh, and I'm going to give it an IP address 1.1.1.1 slash 32. I just need a host address here. Um, I don't need to turn on OSPF because I'm doing a redistribute connected, but that might be something you would need to do. Um, so that's it for that. Now, I'm going to turn on through router PIM, I'm going to turn on PIM routing. Okay, and then under PIM routing, I have many options here. Anycast RP, I can set um, RP addresses, etc. I'm going to do two things under here. One is I'm going to set a BSR candidate so I can become the bootstrap router, and that's done through election. And also, I'm going to uh, turn on uh, RP candidate so I can become the RP, and again, that's through election. You don't have to do that. You can turn on a static RP address, so I can just say RP dash address, and then tell it who the who the RP is. The downside of it statically um, configuring RP addresses is 
you don't have redundancy, right? So if I use an election process and use RP candidates, whoever has the highest priority will win the RP election. If he fails, someone else will take over as the RP. Someone else will take over as the RP. If he fails, et cetera, et cetera. So there's always a backup. If I use static RP addresses, I lose that redundancy. So that's probably not the ideal way you want to do this. So uh, I am going to do a, a BSR dash candidate is the command. Oops. There we go. Uh, and then I need to specify which interface we're going to use the address from. Who's going to be my candidate? So I'm going to use loopback. You could use a VE or a physical or a tunnel interface even if you wanted to, but I'm going to use my loopback. So it can be reachable through multiple places. Now the hash length is, um, it could be from 1 to 32 bits. Recommended is always to keep that at 30. Uh, so we're just going to stick with the recommended best practice. And then the priority, so the priority here is is, is for election purposes. So um, the highest priority is going to win the election and become the bootstrap router for this segment. And so I'm going to make myself uh, 254. So I'm going to be the second highest priority. Uh, so everyone's going to default to priority zero. Oh, and it's also, now it's telling me that I don't have... Um, PIM turned on on those interfaces. So I'm actually going to drop out of here and I'm going to go to interface loopback one and turn on IP PIM dash sparse. All right. Oops. And then I'm going to actually do the same thing on VE10. I'm going to do the same thing. So that's all I need to do to turn it on the interface. Now I'm going to go back into uh, router PIM here and do that candidate statement again. So loopback one is the candidate. I'm also going to do an RP candidate. So I don't have to be either one of these, right? If I've already got another BSR or another RP on the environment, that's fine. I don't have to set this on every router. Um, but again, for redundancy, you should at least set it on a couple. Okay, so under RP candidate here, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to go uh, loopback one. And then there's no options under that. I'm just saying that that's my candidate loopback. So again, you know, I could create static RPs if I wanted to. Uh, I don't have to have any RP. I could just let the election process and someone else take over. But but those are the, those are the basics. So I need to turn on PIM. I need to uh, tell it what kind of PIM on the interfaces I want to run. So PIM sparse in this case, not dense. Um, and then I'm setting uh, my RP candidate and my BSR candidate. Um, again, optional. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a client here. So um, under VLAN 10, I'm going to untag uh, Ethernet 1 slash 1 slash 1 which is where my PC is, and it's streaming a video file. So we should see a group get added, assuming that my streaming is still running. So uh, first of all, uh, show IP PIM uh, leaves me with multiple things, right? So I can show um, PIM sparse, I can show BSR, I can show the RP set, etc. So let's have a look at a few things. So show uh, sparse. Right, so it's going to show me my mcache, my hello intervals. It shows me information about that, right? Uh, we can show my uh, BSR. So here's the bootstrap router. So this system is a candidate bootstrap router. The BSR address is 2.2.2.2. So the BSR is actually the other router. It's won the election, right? Here's my configuration. I'm 1.1.1.1. Priorities 254. Um, so they actually have, both have the same priority. So normally you would choose one over the other. Um, and 1.1.1 is the next candidate RP. So if, the, if this one fails, this is who's going to take over. Um, we can do a uh, show PIM uh, RP. And RP candidate shows me that I'm the candidate 1.1.1.1 for that group, for, for, 
for 224000 slash four. So all of the multicast groups, right? You can be a, you can have a different RP um, for different groups. So the BSR will say these groups belong to this R RP and these groups belong to this RP. That's fine. You don't have to have your BSR and your RP is the same device and you don't have to have all of your groups pointed to the same RP. That's uh, definitely not um, in, in a large environment with lots of, of multicast groups. That's probably not a very efficient way to do it anyway. So we can look at our RP map. So right now I only have one group, which is coming from my laptop. So it's 239, 255, 255, 250, which belongs to this RP. If I had multiple groups in here, we would see those group addresses listed and the RP, which may or may not be the same RP address, just depending on, uh, on the rest of your configuration. We can look at the RP set. So I have two potential RPs, right? So for this group, for, which is everything in this case, I have two RPs and 2.2.2.2 is the primary RP. And if it fails, 1.1.1 is the secondary RP. So either one of those could be the RP. Uh, we could also do a show IP PIM group. Um, so it's going to show me my group again. So this is where my group is coming in. So Ethernet 1.1.1.1, my laptop, uh, which is on VE10. And there's the group address that I'm advertising out that port. Um, and lastly, let's look at our mCache. So the mCache here is showing, here's my laptop, uh, 10.0.0.101, coming in E111. Um, his RP is 1.1.1.1, um, and, uh, and there's the hash mask. There's the group it's sending in that port. Um, okay, so that's basically it. Um, oh, one more thing. Show IP PIM uh, neighbor is also going to show me that I have a neighbor, 10.0.0.2, out port 1 slash 2 slash 1, um, VRF, hold down, priorities, etc. out VE10. So I can see if I had multiple neighbors, obviously they would show up here. Um, so you can have redundant uh, BSRs, redundant RPs. You can see the maps. Um, but that's, that's basically it. So as long as your IP routing table is configured correctly, then configuring PIM, uh, at least PIM sparse, is a very simple process uh, on top of that. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for joining and we'll see you next time.